I'm gonna choose you, okay? Question, this, what does this look like? A hundred dollar bill, right? Okay, now, do you think that this hundred dollar bill was potentially used for, maybe even, was maybe even robbed one day? Potentially, right? Do you think that this hundred dollar bill supported prostitution probably? Maybe, probably extortion, possibly. It could have been used for anything bad. It probably, have mercy, it probably was involved in the ending of somebody's life. Was it not? Do you want this hundred dollar bill? She would still take it, why? Because it does not matter what this money has been involved in. It still has value. So too, even though we look mad, image of God and even though Satan seeks to degrade us, Christ disassociates us from the wicked things we have done and accepts us from our value. Because the reality is the same way this money was used for bad, this money also was used to give for donations. It probably was also used to pay tithe, to buy food for a poor, poor, poor person, anything. So this money has both good and bad things associated with it. But friends, the gospel is, you do not do things to make you acceptable before God. And when you come to Christ, seek justification. It does not matter how much good you've done. It does not matter how much bad you've done. Christ disassociates that, sees your soul of value, and accepts that soul for its value. Amen. Now friends, let me ask you another question. I got, I got another example for you. I got another example for you. Okay. Now just imagine, right? Two, one five, one ten, right? Okay, you see how the church wakes up now and you start involving money. They say, I know money in the church wakes up. Have mercy. Have mercy. Um, five dollar bill, ten dollar bill, amen? Okay. Now, let's imagine something, right? Okay, so the money has value. Christ accepts that money for us. Value. Are we together, church? We're on the same team, amen? We're on the same place, amen? I'm not here to hurt you, amen? We're on the same team, amen? Praise God, amen? Praise God, we have a $10 bill, we got a $5 bill, right? Amen, one is what color? Blue, and one is purple. Now, we're gonna introduce another person in the story. Her name is Macy. She's a little girl, maybe four years old. Macy, right? Okay, now, little Macy, her favorite color is blue. She loves blue. Mom, I want blue sheets, I want blue shoes, I want everything that's blue, right? Little Macy, she loves blue, right? What color is this? Blue. Now, little Macy's aunt comes to Macy, and she says, Macy, I want to give you $10. $10, you know? Just give it to mommy anytime. <laughs> she tells her, yeah, don't worry. She, <laughs> so, 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 listen, 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 listen. So, she gives Macy $10, amen? What color is this? Macy's favorite color is blue. Okay, she says, Macy, take this money, when you're hungry, give it to mom and say, Mommy, I want some food or some snacks or something, right? Okay, now she gives it to Macy, right? Now, oftentimes in movies, you see an example of this. I now want her $10 and for, for my $5, right? And I know Macy's favorite color is blue. So I come to Macy, I say, Macy, how you doing? She says, I'm good. I said, Macy, what's your favorite color? She says, blue. I know that. I said, you know, Macy, my favorite color is purple. I said, Macy, and you see this in movies, do you not? Know? It says, Macy, I... What? I'm blue money, you have purple money. Can we trade? I'll trade my blue money. Your blue is your favorite color, right? And my purple is my favorite color. So I'll trade you my, you know, blue for your, your purple. But you don't tell her the value because she might pick up on it. But you trade it because she likes blue. What is the analogy, friends? Sometimes we as Christians trade our soul, trade something that is more valuable for something that is less valuable on the premise of what we like. But I like clubbing, I like smoking, I like drinking, I like being adulterous, I like all these things. So I trade my value for something that is less valuable because I like something. We are no ignorant than little Macy, being deceived by the devil. Are we not as little Macy? Friends, do not trade your soul. As a young person, even when you get in university and college, there's no party, there's no drug, there's no girl, there's no boy that is worth you sacrificing your soul and the infinite value Christ has placed upon you. Oh, I wish we'd understand this point. I wish we'd understand this point. We can move on. Friends, Sometimes you get deceived by the devil to make stupid exchanges. It's just like, I mean, I don't watch basketball, but I could imagine, imagine I had a basketball team and I traded LeBron James for my grandma. 
It doesn't, it does, it, 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 to me, that's not even funny because it just doesn't even make sense. Imagine you had an Audi A7, huh? 2016, and you drive into Honda Accord and you say, can I get a 2006 Civic? It does not make sense. The exchange does not make sense. And that is the lesson Christ sought to teach in Matthew 16 and verse 26. You know what he said? He said, what shall it profit a man? if he gained the whole world and loses his soul. And then you know what he said? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Implying that there is nothing on this earth, whether material or anything, that is as valuable for you to make a trade. Because your soul is worth more. You see, we have so much potential.